Well, how do you guys go from Instagram follower to investor? We were just naturally attracting young people who are our age mm -hmm. through our content, uh, which is awesome. Like we want to help people, but it's not really the people that can invest at this point because most right. people our age don't have that kind of capital, right? So what we were realizing was we were attracting not only those people, but on top of it, other influencers like yourself, Brian, that's how you mm -hmm. found us. So what we would started doing was getting invited on people's podcasts like this one. And mm -hmm. those podcasts are where we've gotten a lot of our investor uh, leads from. So nice. by getting in front of their audiences, mm -hmm. uh, we now had like our back end marketing machine kind of in place where we have a lead magnet, email automation system that allows them to book a call with us mm -hmm. and things like that already in place. But you can't get in front of people, then you're never going to like grow your investor database, whether that's in person or for us, it's social media in person. That's how we use social media to actually get in front of investors. Hey, this is Brian Briscoe, and welcome to the Diary of an Apartment Investor podcast. Uh, today's episode does need a little bit of an introduction. We went a little bit off script today, and we're posting an episode uh, with Jeffrey Donis, but not the typical episode that you've seen on the podcast before. Uh, inside the Tribe of Titans, the multifamily investing community that I also host uh, we often have guest speakers come and talk to the community, you know, live guest speakers with question answer time where people can can listen to what's going on, ask questions in stream and be able to participate in these events. And so today we decided to air one of these. We had uh, Jeffrey come on and talk to us about how to build a social media following. And we talk a lot about him, about his business and all of that. So here comes the episode. I hope you enjoy. All right. So welcome Tribe of Titans, Titan It group today. We got Jeffrey Donis, one of the Donis brothers with us. And if you don't know who Jeffrey is, you know, check out their Instagram. They're on a lot of social media platforms and they just do a really, really fabulous job on social media, which is particularly why I wanted to bring him in today to talk is just kind of like how to build a social media following. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey, that doesn't mean we have to just speak about social media. I mean, yeah. before we hit the record button, we had a really good discussion on things, but that's what we're going to do today. So, you know, Jeffrey, why don't you do us yeah. a favor? Tell us a little bit about yourself to start out. For sure. Uh, thanks for having me, Brian. And hello to everyone in the audience. My name is Jeffrey Donis. I work with my two brothers. I have a twin named Kerwin. And then my other older brother, his name is Kenneth. I'm 21 years old. I live in Durham, North Carolina. I got started in real estate about three years ago with my two brothers. We were college freshmen. I was a college freshman at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, just cold calling in our dorm rooms. And that all started with wholesaling, single family properties. Eventually got into some creative finance deals. Fast forward, we did about 15 deals that first year. I learned about apartment syndication through podcasts and different books that we started reading. I uh, eventually led us into uh, joining different mastermind groups and things like that. The one thing that we've always been big on is just taking massive action and failing forward in a way. So eventually uh, got ourselves into uh, a few deals as co-GPs and one as a lead sponsor. So it's a little over a thousand units overall uh, that were on the GP side. Awesome. Now, one thing that I'll, I, I will throw out and kind of reiterate, you said you're 21. How old's Kenneth? He's 24. Okay. So you got, you got a 24 year old and two 21 year olds that are in over a thousand units. So, you know, I mean, it's in the best possible way. If they can do it, anybody can do it. I think yeah, the, I agree. the age factor there, you know, when, when I was 21, you know, I was still waiting to finish college before I decided what to do. You know, it was like, yeah, I wasn't sitting in my dorm room, you know, making phone calls, <laughs> trying to hustle real estate. But yeah, age in a lot of ways, a lot of people look at, hate to say it, it's true. A lot of people look at yeah. 21 year olds, you know, especially those guys with gray in my beard and like, <laughs> he's 21, what does he know? Right. But you guys got out there, you're hustling, you're doing a great job. And, you know, I'm fascinated with your, your social media and how you guys have grown that. So let's walk through, first of all, what platforms are you on? And yeah. Well, actually, what platform is you on? And we'll go with my next questions. Yeah. So the main ones that I think uh, that we started on were Instagram, Facebook, and then LinkedIn has always been something that lately has been more of a focus. And mm -hmm. now we're expanding it onto YouTube, but we have like TikTok and things like that. Not necessarily where our target audience is. Although for us, it is, we just naturally attract young people and yeah, a lot yeah. of young people are on TikTok. So um, that's all the platforms that we're on at this point. Okay. So, so look them up on any of those platforms. I first found them, I think on Instagram and let's talk about, you know, why you guys started posting, you know, where, where'd you guys start posting first and what was yeah. your reason for doing it? Yeah. So initially it was all just to document our journey. 
I just, for some reason, I like, I, I always read books and I still do. I listen to a lot of different podcasts and I was doing that at first when we were first starting. Uh, mm-hmm. So we kept listening to podcasts and they kept hearing Grant Cardone is one person that we were listening to at the point at the time. He talked about omnipresence and the importance of that. And for us, it was really just a document at first. We were just kind of just, you know, letting people know what we were doing. Mm-hmm. There was no really intention behind it. I just thought, you know, if we can build a brand, eventually it'll kind of come back full circle and give us some type of reward for doing that. So mm-hmm. at first, that's what it was, was just documenting our, our journey of cold calling, going to meetups, literally pictures of me and my brothers at the desk, and then like a video, small things like that. And over time, when we got into apartment syndication, that's when it, it had that actual purpose, mm-hmm. um, which I can get into. But it was really now it's for credibility, attracting partners, investors, and things like that. Yeah. You know, and documenting the journey, I think that's a good way of starting out. I think where people fail is when they try to pretend to be something they're not. Right. And I, I like how you guys started out. I like how how you phrased that. We're documenting our journey. You know, I, I think a lot of people can sniff out the pretenders and what you guys did was real. It was authentic. And I think a lot of people, you got a lot of followers because of it. So you mentioned the purpose there. Let's go in a little more into that. Yeah, in regards to like the reason behind uh, after the fact or initially? Well, yeah, initially you said it was to document your yeah. journey. And then after the fact, you kind of switched because you guys were getting into multifamily. Yeah, so we read the uh, the Best Ever Apartment Syndication book by Joe Fearless. And on it, he talks about a thought leadership platform, mm-hmm. which uh, for you, all of you, if you haven't read that book, I recommend it, but I'm sure you've heard of it or you've read it. The thought leadership platform is pretty much a type of place where you can be producing content and people in your audience that you're slowly going to build We'll consider you an expert. So for us, initially that was Instagram. And then we realized that you know we're already on these platforms. Why not repurpose it, which is just kind of posting it on different platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, on one, you post on Instagram, you can just take it and post it on LinkedIn and kind of format it for that specific platform. So mm-hmm. now the purpose is one, credibility, especially yeah. being young. And like, obviously I, I look young and when people mm-hmm. meet me in person, they, they think I'm young, but what they will do is they'll look me up on my website which we try to make as credible as possible. And yeah. they'll look me up on social media or if they find me on social media, however we come into contact, they see that we're posting very consistently. And then the types of content that we're posting is informative or we like to think it is also inspiring and things like that. So they see you as this real person who's doing yeah. what it is that you said you were doing on a consistent basis. And it's also kind of helpful. Um, so all of these things add to your credibility. And yeah. at the end of the day, if, with an investor, for me, the way I like to think of it is, if they can't find you anywhere, it kind of makes you seem like a ghost mm-hmm. and you don't really want to invest with someone that doesn't exist. You know, like yeah. if I give you my money, you could disappear pretty easily. We're everywhere. So we're not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, it make, makes a lot of sense. And I, I had somebody ask me a couple of days ago about podcasting, you know, same thing. You know, yeah. like, Why do so many multifamily people start podcasting? And my answer was very similar to yours. It, it's, it's a credibility thing, you know, right. it's, If somebody meets you for the first time and looks you up and sees, and my answer to them was about the podcast specifically, but everything you said is, you know, right in line. You know, they see that you're a podcaster. They see that you have a a YouTube channel with hundreds of videos or, you know, a LinkedIn profile or an Instagram profile with hundreds of posts. You know, now it's all of a sudden, okay, you know, these guys are legit. I like what you said. If they've been posting consistently, like you guys have been posting consistently on Instagram for you know, a couple of years now, I'm on your Instagram page right now. Let's see, 718 posts. You know, you guys aren't going away. Yeah. People can find <laughs> you. So, right. and 12,000 followers, by the way. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a nice number there. But so, yeah, so that, that's your, your purpose now. Speaking of the purpose, you know, how do you guys go from Instagram follower to investor? Yeah, that's a great question. So initially in full transparency, like a lot of investors that we were getting, Mm-hmm. naturally attracting and we can kind of go into branding, which um, my brother is the one that actually does our marketing, but he always mm-hmm. brainstorms with me and I used to do it so I can speak to it on it to a certain extent. But t- we were just naturally attracting young people who are our age mm-hmm. through our content, uh, which is awesome. Like we want to help people, but it's not really the people that can invest at this point because most right. people our age don't have that kind of capital. Right. So what we were realizing was we were attracting not only those people, but on top of it, other influencers like yourself, Brian, that's how you found us. So what we would started doing was getting invited on people's podcasts, like this one, uh, like your podcast, I got invited on the bigger pockets podcast. Yep. Terrence Doyle has one with bigger pockets as well. So there's a lot of different big platforms that we started being invited to speak on. And mm-hmm. those podcasts are where we've gotten a lot of our investor uh, leads from. So nice. by getting in front of their audiences, mm-hmm. uh, we now had like our back 
and marketing machine kind of in place where we have a lead magnet email automation system that allows them to book a call with us mm-hmm. and things like that already in place. But if you can't get in front of people, then you're never going to like grow your investor database, whether that's in person or for us, it's social media in person. Yeah. Um, so that's how we, were, we use social media to actually get in front of investors. So, so speaking of, I remember, oh, geez. And, um, you know, since you have a twin, I can't remember if I was talking with you or your twin, yeah. you know, but the first time I invited uh, one of you guys on the podcast, you know, and, and my podcast, you know, is obviously about apartment investing. Um, I remember the response back was, well, we're actually closing on our first deal soon. So can we hold off? Mm-hmm. And I kind of sat and scratched my head. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, because the the appearance you guys give, I mean, looking look, just looking at your your Instagram yeah. channel and everything else, you know, I assumed that you guys had done you know, a lot by by then. I th- I assumed you had you know several different yeah. properties <laughs> or several different GP spots, and and so basically what I'm saying is, you know, what you said about the credibility, you know, you nailed it with me. You know, I looked at that, I'm like, wow, these guys have been doing this for quite a while. They've got a really good following, you know. And it immediately said credible in, in my mind. So I, I definitely agree with what, uh, what you've been saying on that one. But uh, um, well, so cool. So so you're saying you you built your platform, you're, you know, pulled it out of the Joe Fairless book and said, OK, we're going to have our thought leadership platform. And that started getting you guys booked onto bigger and bigger stages and other people's stages as yeah. well, which puts you in front of a different audience. So I, I yeah, love yeah, that yeah. Uh, that route. Anything, anything yeah, to it- add to that? For sure. I think it's a journey. Like and, and the one thing that you mentioned was being authentic. And that's the cool thing about documenting is you're not necessarily trying to act. And initially, I'll be honest, like I think everyone goes through that phase where you feel like an imposter. Uh, maybe you feel like you have to overcompensate through trying to act like you know more than you actually do, which is good because you want to bring value. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, I think you'd be surprised. People get more value through, uh, for example, like I, as someone who's only been in the industry for three years, mm-hmm. can relate more with a, a more naive version of myself, which would be someone who's brand new. Yeah. And I can sort of speak their language a little bit better than someone who's been in the industry for 20 years. That would, that would be harder for them to relate because they haven't been in those shoes for so, so yeah. long. So for example, when I'm speaking with an investor uh, for the first time, that mm-hmm. conversation wasn't that long ago for me. So I can really break it down and be like, okay, this is exactly what I felt, which I, I asked them like, is this what you feel? Okay, cool. Like this is certain things that can help you. Um, mm-hmm. that's, that's stuff that you can have through your content. That's authentic, it's kind of easy because you're documenting it. So it's not like you're sort of trying to go create something. It's more so just very natural and, and almost kind of just through your journey, you're, you're really just taking track and really keeping track of what you're doing. And then it's really easy to make content that way. And okay. when you pick one platform that you can do that on, mm-hmm. then you can just repurpose it. But really the most important thing is to pick one. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a uh, couple of things that uh, I want to follow up on. Okay. Number one, the repurposing thing. Um, I mean, do you find you're getting like the, I mean, do you find that your content, I mean, you're doing your content with Instagram in mind. Is yeah, it yeah. working on LinkedIn the same? Is it working on YouTube the same? Um, you know, what's, what, what have you found with that? Yeah. Um, I'd say they all work. Every platform, you just have to pick one that comes more natural to you and your audience. So for me, I think Excuse me. Each platform serves a different purpose in a way. For mm-hmm. example, LinkedIn, I, I think that's one of the best platforms to be on. I know you know that, Ryan. Um, and one cool thing that I think that works on LinkedIn that doesn't work as well on any other platform is you can actually do direct outreach, which isn't necessarily yeah. organic. But like, man, I did that for different things, and I've gotten in touch with so many people through it, and they'll actually respond. Um, now, the important piece to that is you have to obviously post content, and maybe if people like when I reach out. Uh, they've sometimes they've heard of me certain in one way or the other, um, whether I'm on a podcast, someone else's, or they saw one of my posts, things like that. So they're more likely to respond, Mm -hmm. which obviously helps. It helps building relationships that way. But in regards to like the platform that's right for you, it all depends on what you're, who you're trying to reach and kind of who you are, like um, where are your people, your age, uh, typically Facebook. I don't have a TikTok personality, you know, I I think. I don't either. (laughs) I'm just kidding. You know, yeah, but yeah. Uh, um, my my kids, I don't even have TikTok on my phone, to be honest with you. But, yeah, you don't uh, want to get it. It's distracting. Um, yeah, I know my kids do. Um, yeah. That's sad. Say, Gosh, I'm getting old. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, so something something that you mentioned, and I, I haven't done a lot of, um, I just, 
just saw a video on LinkedIn outreach set strategy that like you know blew my mind and unlocked some doors. But uh, I haven't done any outreach. And I, I like how you you said that you know LinkedIn you know, you get a higher response rate on outreach. Um, I don't know how yeah. many people have reached out to me on Facebook that I just you know I probably got a billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you get a higher outreach on LinkedIn. So what you're saying is, and I'm just you know once again restating you you put a lot of content on LinkedIn. And the idea is you start your outreach program. You're looking for your ideal customer, whoever that is on LinkedIn, you're reaching out to them. And when they see your message, you know, if they don't know who you are, you know, a lot of, a a lot of people, what I do, I'll click their name, look at their profile and you got a good profile content posted, your featured column all set up. All of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I can follow this guy or I'll answer this guy. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a smart thing to do. Um, right yeah. now I, I wait till people send me the connection request and that's when I, I, I do my outreach, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think for people that are newer, or if you don't have a big investor network, you'd be surprised how many people have in their, in their bios, like accredited investor, small mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, and, and a lot of them do answer. Like I've gone on a lot of calls because of that. So it helps to have your profile built up and kind of, you know, filled out on the bio, yeah. maybe have a lot of content, engage with people's content because they want to connect with real people. One. Yeah. Yeah. Second, chances are they might see your post because real mm-hmm. estate isn't that big of an industry. And if they kind of see your face, I mean, you can make it like a personalized message as best mm-hmm. as you can. It's not that difficult. It'll be a numbers game. But if you're kind of stuck with, I don't have that many investors or I just don't know, know that many people in the industry, LinkedIn is free for the most yep. part. I um, mean, it's not that hard. It just takes a few messages a day. I like that. I like that. I did. I did learn today. I asked somebody um, who was talking about their LinkedIn outreach because that's that's kind of been one of the subjects on my mind. Yeah. Um, you are limited to a hundred uh, connection requests per week. You know, you try to do Not more than hundred, the they'll way. shut you down. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I actually, uh, I actually got my account sus- suspended on LinkedIn once. <laughs> Me too. Uh, yeah, it was multiple times. Uh, only once for me, and it wasn't my yeah. fault. Um, LinkedIn <laughs> News picked up one of my posts. They've done it three times now, but oh, wow. um, the first time LinkedIn News picked up my post, the post went viral. It had like it was it was rather controversial, um, <laughs> and it probably had seventy thousand views. And I, I had oh, so many awesome. connection requests, co- inbound connection requests, yeah. that they shut my account down. You know, and it was just like, oh, so I had a 24 how, hour. How controversial was it? I'm just curious. Like, it was, uh, it was after, uh, shoot. It was a Bitcoin. I, I was bashing Bitcoin okay. is what it was. <laughs> that makes sense. And it was, it was right after Bitcoin. Bitcoin was at like 60,000 and in like a four day time frame, it went from 60 to 30. This was, this was like yeah. early 21, maybe late 20. And, you know, I just, I think the post was something stupid. Like, do you remember that time that Bitcoin, you know, lost half its value in three days, you know, and that was the entire post, yeah. but, you know, oh my gosh, I, I had, you know, some Bitcoin haters on there. You know, I, I've never been a fan, but I had a lot of people that were like, no, no, this is just all part of it Buy the dip. And it's going to be at 600,000 in a year and it's yeah. 20 right now, but like 16 uh, now, isn't it? Yeah. So you say 16 now? I think it's like uh, 16,000. Last time I checked, it was like 16.9. Probably like Last that? time I checked, it was like 18 or 19. It's 18.8 right now. Okay. It's going up then. Um, but yes, yeah, it's way far down. But that, that was the post. And <laughs> um, speaking of LinkedIn, you know, I don't know if, if you found the same thing to be true on anything else. The posts that I have made have been the most, that have gotten the most traction, the most views, and the most. Um, yeah, that picked up like that are the ones that I made like on the fly spur of the moment that they weren't the well thought out ones, you know, it's like, oh, you know, looking at the news, Bitcoin just crashed, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. Remember that time Bitcoin crashed? Question mark. (laughs) It's a few seconds, you know, I think those, those like on any platform, those will typically do better because it's more authentic. Yeah. I think the more time you think about it, it's more like, uh, I guess like what's it called like uh, direct or trying to like uh, articulate or create yeah. something i mean on tiktok it's the same thing like if i were to just pull out my phone and make a video or instagram just pull out my phone and make a video and just say something off of the dome mm-hmm. yeah. uh, it'll relate with more people because i'm just kind of speaking from the heart versus trying yeah. to create something and I, I truly think people pick up on that 
especially on LinkedIn and on any platform, but yeah, on our posts as well. I, I, I found a, a recipe that I think works on, re, on LinkedIn. I think every platform is different. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the recipe is, is pretty simple. You know, it's got to be something that people can very easily hit a like button over and yeah. something that makes it really easy to comment on, you know. Um, you know, so I would throw the words, would you agree a lot in, in my posts or what do you think about, you know, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with a post. And the other thing is the first sentence, you know, the first sentence has to be yep. interesting because that's what people, you know, people are going to be scrolling through. Yeah. And that's the first thing they're going to see. So interesting first sentence, um, make it likable, make it easy to read. And that that's typically a pretty good recipe. It almost doesn't matter what your content is, you know. An intriguing first line, easy to read. So I do like, you know, one line, dot, 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 space, one line, dot, dot, dot. You make it so people can just quickly scan down, read your entire message. And, you know, that that seems to be the, the recipe for success for me. Yeah. Like I said, it doesn't similar. matter what I say. Yeah, it's similar on all platforms. I think it has to have a good hook, um, sort of call to action at the bottom. And then uh, the body, it's typically like a story, which yeah. I think is what you're referring to somewhat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, you know, literary form was never my strong point. My <laughs> wife's an English major and she, yeah. Um, yeah. The hook, that's what it's called. The hook. <laughs> um, but, uh, and the call to action, huge mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Um, the call to action, I think. Uh, anyway, so another question I, I, I want to ask you, you mentioned your, your following on Instagram tends to be younger crowd. Um, yeah. I mean, they might not be the investing crowd, but you know, is, is there, have you thought about ways to monetize that? That's a conversation that we've actually like mm -hmm. really been talking about um, because there's, um, you'd be surprised how many like DMS we get on Instagram. Um, it's a lot. And a lot of people are looking for mentorship, mm -hmm. uh, which we don't, I wouldn't say we're not like not, not in the position to do it, but I think it's a whole different thing that we're not actually looking to take on at this point. Mm -hmm. We really just want to focus on scaling our company. I mean, I, that would be a whole other company that we would be growing, but Maybe you have different thoughts on it. We haven't figured out how to monetize it at this point. I, I was starting to think if we can just partner with people in our audience and try to like they source deals, whether that's single family or multifamily, mm -hmm. and I can use my network to sort of help them and at the same time sort of benefit from it in a way, yeah. then it'd be mutually beneficial. But with the mentorship, that's the other thought that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, on top of it, like we get relationships out of it and things like that. But yeah. what are your thoughts? You know, mentorship is something that's uh, I think a lot of people look towards because it's it's a fairly high dollar thing. And yeah. incidentally, I am going to be starting a mentorship program. My target launch date is going to be July first. But awesome. You know, so that's something that I've been thinking about. People I naturally attract aren't the you know high net worth investors that are you know ready to write six figure checks. Right. You know, I, I typically tend to attract the people who want to do what I'm doing. Right. And right. that's. Yeah. So yeah, I've thought a lot about how to monetize that. It's taken me four years to get to the point to where I'm trying to, you know, start a mentorship program right now. But yeah, so it does take time. And, you know, I, I did, you know, Tribe of Titans. I mean, everybody here is a Tribe of Titans member. Yeah. You know, I'm not ma I'm making money off. I'm not making a killing, you know, so right. people who came in early are paying 30 bucks a month. People who came in a yeah. little later are paying 40 a month. So, you know, I'm making, you know, enough. It pays for my podcast. Yeah. It pays for like a lot to keep the lights on. But the right. other thing I was thinking, and I made $1,400 in the last week on affiliates. So, I mean, looking at your market, you know, yeah. affiliate marketing works. And if you can find a way to bring people into your, you know, maybe, maybe co-produce content, you know? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, you know, I have, let's say I have a coaching program. I don't yet. And I come on your channel and we put a, a code on your channel saying, hey, anybody interested in my coaching program, click this button. And that button tells me it's got the you know, cookie built in or whatever it's called, but it's got the, the tracking yeah, information yeah. in there. And they go to my channel and they sign up for mentorship. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to send you a thousand bucks. You know, so that's yeah. one way to monetize it. And I've I've done that with, with people that I trust and products that I use. Yeah. For example, my... The guy that's done my multifamily insurance for several years now, you know, came to me a couple of months ago and said, if you send me referrals, I'll send you a hundred bucks each. I'm like, okay. You know, I mean, and I, I use him and that's, that's something that I'm adamant right. about. I've got to use the service. Yeah. That's something we've but, thought about. And I have like a lot of uh, good friends, like the, the ones you mentioned in regards to insurance and debt. 
uh, awesome people that I would recommend for free, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure they, they can throw in an you affiliate. Know, and if, if you're yeah. doing them a service, they're, they're going to give you kickbacks. You right. know? Yeah. So you just got to, got to work it out, get the, the affiliate codes. You know, I made uh, a couple hundred dollars last year on conference tickets. I personally would rather give people discounts than get a kickback. So yeah. you know, if uh, a conference organizer gives me a, uh, a kickback, I'll go back to them and say, can I get a discount instead? But yeah, there, there's one or two conference organizers that like, now we're just doing the, the kickback. But I mean, uh, stuff like that, selling conference tickets, I got, uh, you know, maybe two at this conference, three at that conference. You know, sometimes the the people that I bring on have products to sell and a lot of times they'll yeah. have some sort of affiliate link. But uh, do those do those conferences come naturally or did you like reach out? Some of them reach out to me. Some of them I reach out to. Okay. So, I mean, like the Michael Blanc, I, I, I was a Michael Blanc coaching student several years. I know a lot of people yeah. in the organization. That one, I I think I have an affiliate link that still works with them for anything, to be honest with you. But, yeah. you know, a lot of the guys who runs conference have been on the podcast before. And so a lot of times it's just a really simple, hey, I heard you got a podcast, uh, heard you have a conference coming. You guys have an affiliate program. Yeah. And that's it. You know, most of the time they're going to say, yep. And if you have any sort of following, even if you don't have a following, if somebody right. says, Hey, I'll go sell tickets for you. If you give me 20 bucks a piece. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you yeah, make a few posts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, I think it's pretty easy. Conference tickets are pretty easy to do. Um, yeah. The advertisements are a little, a little different. You know, you just got to find somebody who's willing to pay. And a lot of people are going to pay big bucks for advertising and, um, they're, they're not, a lot of people are not opposed to doing affiliates. Yeah. That's a good idea. So I thought about it, but we haven't actually done it. So I'll tell my brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's probably a simple way to monetize, um, sure. just affiliates. And since you guys have over 10,000 followers on Instagram, you can do it a lot easier and people can just swipe up instead of yeah, yeah. You know, you throw links into your, your, uh, posts and stories, but, uh, yep. just my thoughts. I've taken advantage of it sometimes, but you know, I think, uh, this has been the best week I've ever had with affiliates, you know, 1400 bucks. It was uh, not a bad week. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad week. Incidentally, both of the guys who sent me money last week for, for affiliates were on this webinar at one point. Awesome. So anybody in the group have any questions or comments? I should have been monitoring the chat. I haven't been. Um, okay. No, nothing in there. Anybody have any questions specifically about social media before we, we talk about other stuff? Steve, go ahead. Hey, and, hey, Jeffrey, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. Um, I, I don't have so much a question as maybe just a thought. You know, I, I'm probably the oldest one in the group. And so I'm not, not terribly socially mm -hmm. platform a guy, right? I don't really use a lot of stuff. But lately, I've been realizing, man, if I really want to try to get, get myself out there, it's kind of an uncomfortable thing for an older guy like myself, mm -hmm. right? And so how do I, uh, I know that I have to do it. And little by little, I've been, you, you guys are talking about LinkedIn. I've been looking at my LinkedIn. I haven't updated my LinkedIn in like four years. Mm -hmm. right? I, you know, I've created two companies since then. So I'm thinking, God, I really need to get in there. And I go, because eh. I also believe that probably LinkedIn is a great, great spot to pick up, you know, some accredited yeah. investors. But yeah. I, I guess, how do I get past the, or what do you suggest that I do to kind of get on, you know, from being uncomfortable to be more comfortable? Because I was just looking at your TikTok, Jeff. I went all the way to the beginning. I go, man, you're doing it every single day. And I see how you <laughs> literally started, you know, I, I think I saw one with your girlfriend in there and you guys were dancing and it slowly <laughs> progressed. Into the more I mean, I should took that down. <laughs> that was pretty cool. But, but you were, what I noticed that you did it literally, um, yeah every day if not every other day when i i don't know if i would become no one that in my world knows me like that yeah right and how do i rebrand myself to do that yeah no that's a great question i think is i mean at the end of the day it is like your mindset and how you think of it <clears throat> like for example i i always my brother he's the one that makes our content right now and every day i see him making content now it does take like a discipline you don't have to do it every single day obviously that's going to be more effective but it, you're obviously running a business and then you don't have three people that you're working with and it could be hard to do it every day. So I would say the main, the first thing is to get your mind right and understand that 
like what's the purpose behind it? I think if you truly understand that and you're trying to help people in your audience uh, with whatever you're trying to get them to do, whether that's to invest or click on this link because it's going to take them to a resource, then you're doing it with the understanding that it's not for your benefit, it's for their benefit. Um, That's one way to think of it. But on top of it, I think it's like every habit uh, that's uncomfortable, like going to the gym or eating a, a diet. It's not easy. That's why a lot of people don't do it but it's something that you'll build and get better at. So I guess it's setting up a time to just one set, like to come up with some ideas. And at the end of the day, you just have to post it. Now mm-hmm. in regards to the mindset, I th- I mean, I'm assuming like there's certain people in your audience that you might be afraid of what they'll think or things like that. Um, because if you, I'm, I'm assuming that's what I, I have to overcome is like the fear of what people will think, yeah. why I look dumb or why I sound dumb, things like that. Is that right? I mean, probably that, that goes for everybody, right? You, you're yeah. like, well, you know, you, you might even worry about the guy you knew in high school, what he might think, you know, because you haven't talked to him in 30 years. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'll, sure. I'll tell you, and this is, this is what I realized after I started posting on LinkedIn is, you know, if you haven't been posting on LinkedIn, the algorithms aren't going to pick your post up. Okay. And the reality is your first post on LinkedIn is going to be seen by 16 people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you know, the, the important thing is to just start, you know, and yeah. what, what I found is, you know, at first for me, it was difficult, you know, at first, you know, I started, I started just by liking other people's posts and I didn't make, I, I was probably, you know, a daily user on LinkedIn for, you know, two months before I made my first post, mm-hmm. I started commenting on other people's posts. You know, I find someone else's post, comment on it. You know, that's a lot easier, a lot less pressure than than making your own post and making your own content but Mm -hmm. you know you can you can ramp that up into where you are turning and turning out your own content too but that's uh you know i i've been doing linkedin almost well i i've last two weeks i haven't posted a lot intentionally but uh um for the better part of the last four years you know i've been posting three to five times a week but Mm -hmm. trust me i started where you are steve i started like yeah seeing other people post. And, you know, I remember my very first post, you know, I was, I was in oh, the I'm Pentagon when I posted it <laughs> and I was scared, you know, it's like, oh. yeah, that's, that's the thing is that, you know, you get really, really uncomfortable and you're like, okay, this is not who I've been. Yeah. But, you know, you, it's a rebranding, right? Be that person. That's, that's, that's and, what you gotta do. You gotta be that person. I guess the biggest, my biggest fear is that, you know, you, you don't want pe- the people that you do know, they're the ones that, you potentially um they could call you and call you out maybe call you a fake because hey that's not you you know you're not really you right so that's part of the fear i guess so go back to what jeffrey said at the very beginning the first they were documenting their journey yeah you know and, and if you're doing that you're fine or if it's like hey you know something that i've i've learned recently is nobody can can counter that but if you say I'm an expert in multifamily. Follow me. Yeah, they're, they're, they might call you out. I think I think yeah. a lot of it's just the authenticity. Yeah, oh, you're yeah. probably right. That's a good point. Yeah, and then some action. One actionable thing I think that you could potentially look into is uh, go on LinkedIn and see whose content that you can relate to, that you like, and that you think you could potentially have some type of inspiration from or get some inspiration from it. So that way, it's not like you're just coming up with it by yourself because that can mm-hmm. be hard. So maybe just you're not copying them because you're going to put it through your own filter and then make it your own. But that way you understand, I mean, what it looks like. And eventually it's just making the post uh, and maybe set up that kind of time, an hour a day. Uh, mm-hmm. And first I would start with the profile. Certain people that um, they had these previous careers, I'm sure uh, Brian has seen yeah. it. They'll make this post announcing that they're now doing this. So mm-hmm. if, if it's something that's brand new to your page, potentially just making that post and letting people know that that's what you're doing now and kind of catching them up to date so that way they're not caught completely off guard yeah. but at the end of the day it could just start with you reposting other people's yeah. posts commenting yeah. because then they'll start to see that's your interest and that's yeah. something that uh is now who you are no i get it i actually did do that uh probably a couple of weeks ago on facebook awesome. and a nice little thing like that and you know i got a lot of positive feedback it was yeah. nothing but positive feedback which is which is good and believe me that that was a little nerve-wracking too yeah i mean i I have been doing this every day for four years or several times a week for four years now, as far as LinkedIn. And I've only had a couple of people, you know, who have kind of 
tried to call me out on the carpet, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there, there, there have been a couple of times where, you know, I didn't support claims or I may have gone a little for, far and, you know, I, I did have a couple of people call me out, but, you know, I, I think as long as you're, you're not getting, uh, making, not going too far out on a limb at first, you'll be fine. And, yeah. uh, you know, some of the times people called me out, I went back, looked at my post and like, okay, yeah, you're probably right. I should yeah. have explained that better you know, yeah. or, or whatever. But uh, I, I would say I, I would go back to, you know, kind of a Grant Cardone type one is like, you know what? Yeah. If, if they hate you, that's fine. They're listening to you. 100%. Any attention is good attention. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the, the guys that call me out on my post, it usually starts discussions and it usually gives me a chance. You have a character account on LinkedIn, you know, and some of my longer posts that I, and those typical ones that I get called out on are ones where I start writing and it's like way too long and I start cutting and I don't keep the full story in. But when people start calling me out, it gives me an opportunity to keep explaining things in the comments. Yeah. Huh. And those are the posts that get a lot of traction are the ones where you get a lot of discussion in the comments. So yeah. Yeah. I would say, don't be afraid of that. That should be your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Point. Yeah. But it is, it's a muscle. I think you build it over time. Like initially I, I still get scared, uh, but eventually you just become kind of get numb to it. And I'm sure Brian can agree. It's, it's like a muscle that you kind of get stronger and stronger. And eventually it's just like, like anything else that you're doing consistently. Yeah. Now. So, so he, he mentions, you mentioned something earlier, uh, Jeffrey, uh, you know, backend and whatnot website and everything yeah. else. I think it's, it, we, we would, we'd miss out a lot if we didn't talk about that because, yeah. um, I think you should work on the back end first and and not the front end. But how do you guys have your social media tied to the website and to the yeah. to everything else? Yeah. So the, the the social media really is just to get eyeballs. Um and we have certain links in our bio, which is our website. But in regards to the main thing, let's for example, like a podcast, at mm -hmm. the end, um, we'll either send people to our website or specifically our lead magnet. Mm -hmm. And that can be an ebook, uh, some type of checklist for us, the checklist. And it's just something that my brother created that will give people certain things to look into before investing into an investment as a passive investor. Yeah. So it's free, but you obviously want to like build up the value as it if costs it's something you an that email is... address. You know, it's not exactly yeah, exactly that's yeah, all yeah. it costs. But yeah. it's like look at all this that you get, and all you have to do is put it in your email and visit yeah. the link. So yeah, I, I just I click the link in your your Instagram pro profile, and it's perfect. It goes to access your free three step passive investing checklist. So you know. Um, I mean, I assume what you're doing is in each one of your posts, you're linking that, hey, link in the bio, which most people do on Instagram. The link goes in the bio. That's the only place you can put links. You know, they go to the bio, they click the link. There's their passive investing checklist. Hey, cool. All I got to do is type my email in mm -hmm. and I can see right here, it's an active campaign block. So that's going to put their contact information directly yep. into your forms. And I bet it's starting an automation too. Yeah, it is. Yep. Um, that's the cool thing is you don't have to actually send out the emails every day. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, one, one thing there is just, just for everybody, you know, make sure you're working on your back end, make sure you're able to catch the leads that come. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's nice to have leads, but you know, the leads only good for you if you can catch it. 100%. And it takes time, but I, I think there's a lot of Russell Brunson has some really awesome books, um, traffic yeah. secrets. And I forget the other one. Um, but yeah, but, it's, it's another secrets book, but, uh, yeah, funnel hackers is what they call that, that tribe, yeah. but I yeah, highly recommend the checking funnel out hacker books. guy. Oh shoot. What's his other book? He's got some really, really good one-liners too. I mean, oh my goodness. Yeah. But, uh, honestly, I read those two books and learned more about marketing than I ever knew. Yeah. I mean, they're on YouTube for free on the audible version. So yeah. I recommend checking those out. Yeah. I, I, I have them on audible and there, there's several things that I, I should probably go back on. There was actually one statement, yeah. uh, John and I were talking earlier today and there was one thing that we were talking about, you know, content inside the tribe. And there was a Russell Brunson quote that came across my mind after we talked and it was, uh, you know, the things that motivate people. He has got this, he's got this one quote that I'll look it up and, you know, I'm yeah. going to butcher it, but he, he says, Hey, if, if you want to grab somebody's attention, you need to, you know, motivate, inspire hope or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah. um, you know, that's what I started thinking is, you know, I need to do more of that. I need to do more, you know, probably, I'll probably write that on my wall in front of me yeah. but, uh, and we'll see.
Oh, cool. Well, hey, Jeffrey, one one last question for yeah. you. You know, what's what's next for you? Yeah. So uh, personally, we're looking to uh, acquire one or two properties a quarter this year. Um, also with the properties that we have in our current portfolio, uh, we want to continue delivering uh, the returns that we uh, sort of projected for our investors. So that's also the main focus is ensuring that we get to these uh, in stable times with the economy and all. Um, but mainly it's just to continue scaling. And then I'm always learning, growing. So connecting with people like yourself and people in your audience, um, things like that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so every, everybody, you know, this, this is going to be up on YouTube too, and we'll release it as a podcast. So if you're listening, you know, best place to get, get a hold of Jeffrey, I'm assuming you're going to point them to your social media profiles, which we've talked yep. about already. Donna's brothers on yep. YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook. Yep. Got it. Exactly. So all the big ones, all the big ones. All Are you on Twitter? Ones. Did we say Twitter? I am on Twitter. I'm not as active, but I am there. So Donna's brothers as well. Yeah. I dump a bunch of stuff on Twitter, but that's <laughs> just because, you know, in, in our social media releasing stuff, it says, you know, you click a button and it puts yeah. stuff on your Twitter <laughs> account too. So yeah, but I don't, I don't monitor it. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> it's free and easy. So cool. Hey, appreciate your time tonight. Thanks for yeah, doing thank this. You. And, you know, I learned a couple of things that I'm going to uh, start doing. So thanks for everything. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Brian. Thanks you, everyone. Hey, if you like that episode, Make sure to subscribe, but more importantly, if you haven't joined our multifamily educational community yet, which we call a tribe of titans, you are missing out. Get 30 days free by clicking the link in the description to this episode or go to thetribeoftitans.info and we'll see you there.